So it's sometime after Christmas in between New Year's. Uh, I've been on vacation and the skies have been super clear. And so that means I have no idea what's going on right now. Shooting uh, Ben 1 tonight with the ASI 294mm Pro. So I did a little uh, test run, did seven 10 minute subs the other night and stacked them of the Flaming Star Nebula and oh my goodness, like seriously, oh my goodness. Yeah, let's uh, let's flip around here and see what we're working with. We got the, uh, like I said, we got the ASI 294 mm, and our we switched over here to our Mead 80 millimeter Apo triplet, and I've got the TPO 180 uh, as a guide scope. Yeah, pretty cool. And everything's riding on the Skywatcher mount, Skywatcher EQ 6R Pro. Yep. I got the counterweight sucked all the way up because it's a very little weight. Oh, and everything's being powered with the uh, Pegasus Astro Power Box. And there's the ZWO automatic focuser. Hey everyone, it's Steve with Entering Into Space. And tonight is going to be another clear night. I swear, I think I mentioned that already. But anyway, yeah, so we're, uh, we're going to be shooting some more on the Flaming Star Nebula. Uh, really putting this uh, ASI 294mm through its paces and uh, shooting it in hydrogen a little bit tonight. I want to try to do, uh, ow, mosquitoes. I want to try to do, look at that. <laughs> My new camera is awesome. Uh, I want to try to do a complete image in one night. I've been doing that here lately because the 294 is like a signal sponge. It's a photon filter, just, <laughs> it's greedy. Man, is, is, it's a world of difference but I'm gonna shoot a little bit more hydrogen. I think I have enough of an hour. Wait, did he say an hour? Yes, an hour. An hour of data, and that's it, on, of hydrogen. And I've got an incredible image already. So probably try to put like another hour on it tonight and shoot some sulfur and oxygen. And hopefully the clouds uh, that you see behind me um, will dissipate. That's what it says on clear sky anyway uh, and stay that way all through the night because this has been one hell of a week for astrophotography and i've been on vacation which has been pretty cool so we're gonna let it get uh, a lot darker we're gonna go into nina and get everything set up and let's see what the uh, first ha sub looks like i'll show you real time stay tuned So I see 405, the Flaming Star Nebula. It is an intense hydrogen uh, emission nebula that has very little sulfur and oxygen data, but you will find some in the core of it. Not so much around the surrounding edges, but definitely within the core, there's a pretty strong oxygen concentration and a little bit on the fringing of some of the uh, structure what very little structure there is there there's a little bit of uh, sulfur signal there too it can be found in the constellation Eureka Eureka what the heck is that floating around that's oh, my dog uh, yeah just north of the Orion Nebula so they kind of rise together 
Uh, so right now it's probably about 30 degrees. We've got some clouds trying to, you know, be a pain in the ass right now, but they're gonna move away and then we'll get started here. Uh, and if you've heard of the Tadpoles Nebula, they're like really close to each other, yeah. So Flaming Star Nebula, if you have not shot it and you've modified your camera, your DSLR, or you've got a dedicated astronomy camera and you're really looking for something that's got a lot of signal, something intense that's gonna show up in some shorter subs, I would definitely recommend it. Okay, the clouds are almost gone. I promise you, fingers crossed. Uh, but I think they're gone enough, we can do a little polar alignment here. Um, so if you get over here to, really quick, if you, if you, just do it. I told you to do it, now do it, okay? Uh, over here in Nina, I've got a simple sequence set up. I've got, uh, I'm just gonna shoot a couple HA uh, subs off the bat so you guys can see you know, what the Flaming Star Nebula looks like. Um, and then I'm gonna progress down to sulfur and oxygen and hydrogen. And one little weird quirky thing about Nina, if you don't know this already, I use my luminance filter to plate solve. I just find that uh, shooting three nanometer HA is kind of tough to plate solve. So it's better just to switch over to the luminance because that'll just cover almost every filter and the stars are in focus enough to plate solve. But if you turn on this uh, on filter change, what it's gonna do on the autofocus is it will autofocus, yeah, but then it, somehow it detects that you've switched over a filter when you go from the luminance to like your HA after plate solving. I hope this makes sense, keep up with me. Uh, and so what it does is it autofocuses and then it senses a filter change and autofocuses again. So you'll get two autofocuses. But the really cool thing about the new Nina is you can change all these parameters on the fly, which is uh, pretty awesome. Uh, so what I do is I leave that off and then I just have to remember to turn it back on, you know, after I get the sequence going. So otherwise I gotta sit through two autofocuses and I can't because I'm so excited. Anyway, so let's go over here to the uh, imaging tab and let's just make sure we're in focus one by one. We've got a two second exposure here. We don't have a loop. We're doing the luminance. So let's just click that. We're gonna see how <laughs> we're gonna see how in focus we are. Wow, that was that was an excited gasp. Uh, whoa, yeah, I'm digging it. All right, so let's go over here to the three-point polar alignment. Um, we're gonna have to unpark the scope. Scope is unparked. One thing, other thing we can do is go ahead and connect our PhD2 before we forget, or else it'll scream at us. Uh, go back in here to the imaging tab. I want to turn start from current position off and I want to say direction east off. I want it to go to the east. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I want the telescope to lean away from me. And so we're going to run the play button here. And what it's going to do is it's going to take a four second image and uh, plate solve that. Boom, done. It's going to rotate the scope 10 degrees or so. And it's gonna, I've got an eight second settle. It's gonna take another four second image. It's gonna do this three times. And take one last image, and then it'll know what our drift is, our, our drift error. And we'll actually, ah, ooh, it's back towards the light. Stay away from the light. Uh, so yeah. Now it's telling, it's basically, you gotta look at these numbers. So it's saying I gotta go left like 26 degrees and I gotta go up three degrees. And then basically that is where I'm at now and that's where I wanna be. And then it gives you a, it's kind of a zoomed in view and then this is an overview. All right, so uh, I'm not tethered anymore because the new DJI Pocket 2 has a wireless, touch my face, has a wireless uh, microphone. So let's get up. <clears throat> All right, so you could probably still hear me. Uh, I've got to go left big time. So you're just going to watch these numbers move. You should start seeing that 26 degrees uh, drop. And then we got to go up. 
not dropping yet. There it goes. And I'm going to go up on the altitude some. I found that the altitude is pretty sensitive. You don't have to move it too much. But you can see how the bullseye and that corner of that rectangle are now starting to come into line here. And just small increments. Uh, small increments will do. You know, if you overshoot it, you got to go back. So it's better just to stay on one side. To so see it says I've actually got to go down. You see how touchy that altitude is? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten my altitude knob up against the, the down knob. So you see, just me tightening that knob up got me pretty close. So I'm real close on my azimuth. I'm making very fine adjustments. So you can see how when I tightened up on that bolt, it actually pushed me past just a little bit. We still got a couple little clouds trying to be a pain. You can see them floating by. You see I've overshot, which is fine. I just want to go back to the right, which I'm moving the knob on the uh, right side of the mount. Turning it in. And when you get close, I found it's best to just unlock one and turn the other. You know, keeps you from going too far. And I could probably bump that loop up to a little something uh, quicker than four seconds, but who's counting? It's like this one last little cloud is like, feel me. Yeah, I think because of that cloud, I'm kind of all over the place right now. All right, so I think we're pretty close. Uh, for 384 millimeters, oh, we are we are good enough. Uh, so let's go ahead and end that. And uh, call me quirky, but I like to just park the mount for some reason. I always feel like I need to always start at home base. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Because then what am I going to do? I'm going to turn right back around and unpark it. Yeah. So I'm going to go back in here to the sequence. I'm going to turn Meridian Flip on. I want to warm the camera when we're done. I want to park the mount. Slew to target, center target, start guiding. I'm already connected to my uh, to PHD2, and you can see the TPO 180 uh, popping some super sharp stars there. Yeah, man, with the ASI 290 mm mini, uh, we are going to do a autofocus on start. We're going to start out with HA. We'll shoot two of those, and then we'll get into our sequence. So I think the only thing left to do now is to hit play. And we didn't get any error message, so we're doing good. We are slewing. You can see it. Wait, now you can see it. I got to look. So we're slewing to the Flaming Star Nebula. And we're going to take a, what do I have? Oh, for HA, I have a 10 second loop for autofocusing because I'm shooting three nanometers. And I did find that that eight seconds of pause time really helps, uh, especially in plate solving. Using AzTap now instead of Plate Solve 2, so much faster. Look at the stars. Oh my goodness. You know, it's crazy because this is almost 2022. Uh, we're almost into January here. So like in a couple weeks, I'll be going into my fourth year of astrophotography. And you know, I have those doldrums where I'm like, ugh, especially when it's cloudy. I practice processing a lot, probably way too much. But yeah, I still get I still get super excited. It doesn't end, you know, the hunt, that image that's just a little bit better than the last one. You know, you shoot the same thing over and over and people go, why do you do that? Why, because you got a new camera, or you got a new telescope or a different perspective. And uh, that's just an amazing, amazing experience. And then, you know, when you kind of get like, eh, with it, and then you show it to a family member or somebody, or like I gave a metal print as a gift and the whole family went crazy. They were like, look at this. Oh my God, this is amazing. You know, how do you do this? Makes it worthwhile. All the sleepless nights. Okay, so we're, cal we're calibrating our guiding. Then we're gonna go into uh, an autofocus sequence. Boring shit. You don't wanna see that. So let's hook back up when we're at the end of our first Flaming Star 10 minute sub at bin one, 47 megapixels. Don't go anywhere. All right, we are under one minute. We are under one minute here. Uh, yeah, from our first 10 minute sub coming in. 
The skies are super clear, super clear. Uh, couldn't be happier. Another, hopefully, another really good night. I've done a ton of targets this week. It's been a great week off, staycation. Uh, we got some really good guiding, 0.6. You know, we can't complain about that at, at uh, just a little over 300 millimeters, 384 millimeters to be exact. You know, 0.6 guiding is uh, going to get you nice round stars every time. All right, five seconds away. Super excited about uh, this first sub coming in. And here we go. Boom. Would you look at that. That. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, I got a nice little satellite through there. Being plane bombed as we speak. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is a pretty crazy, amazing image for one, one sub, one sub exposure. Pretty happy with that. And when you zoom in here and you look at the, uh, the details, pretty awesome. Yeah, so stay tuned for more and stay tuned for a video or video, an image at the end of this video. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Steve, this is Entering Into Space. I mean, why did I name it Entering Into Space? Because you're always getting into this. You're always getting into this hobby. No matter how much you do, you're getting into it more and more and more, especially your wallet. <sighs> yeah, so until next time, clear skies and clear minds. Thanks for watching.